Welcome to Radiant Reflections, an audio transformative journey hosted by me, Rob Cook. I hope today's topic inspires you to have the day you deserve. Welcome to day 13, Emotions and Emotional Intelligence. When awareness is brought to an emotion, power is brought to your life. Tara Meyer Robson. I think one of the biggest explorations or the deepest explorations in my healing process was learning emotions and emotional intelligence. I mean, it was like going back to the basics of just what was an emotion and and why did I have them and what were they there to do? Um, uh, I searched and read and went through research from here and there. And it's not really a consensus out there on the definition. But what I came up with, emotions are are when we have mental reactions, when we consciously have a mental reaction. And, and that mental reaction is subjectively experienced as a feeling. And so to keep it simple, if you Google, you probably get a whole list of emotions. But to keep it simple, I've narrowed it down to six just so I can make the point. There is sadness, happiness, fear, anger, surprise and disgust so when you go back to some of their earlier audios you remember that our natural state of being is peaceful bliss and anytime you're outside of that zone you'll know because it'll feel different and it will indicate itself by one of those six earlier emotions that I mentioned and when you're in that state It's not designed to be directed toward a specific object. It's only designed to let you know where you are when you're in front of that specific object. And so if you're in front of that object and you're in fear, be aware that you're clouded. If you're in front of that object and there's happiness, be aware. This is a moment to take in. And why it's so important, you know, to know exactly where you are or your state of mind at all time is because it's basically the first pillar in just about any diagram on emotional intelligence there is. There was a study of of skills that distinguish star performers in every field from entry level job to executive positions. And a single most important factor was not their intelligence. It was not their advanced degrees. It wasn't even their technical experience. The most important factor was their emotional intelligence. And that study went on to indicate that as much as 80% of success comes from one's emotional intelligence. So that self-awareness, knowing your state of mind, knowing that you may not be in control of the emotion but you are in control of the action that it creates emotional intelligence also creates compassion and that's because you're able to understand how to manage your emotions so you know how emotions affects others and understanding that creates the platform for great communication So for your practical application, we're going to look at your emotional intelligence. And how we're going to do that is you're going to write down a story of the last time you remember yourself being emotional, whether that was sad or happy, whichever one. And then I want to to compare it to the template I'm about to explain which is what I call the flare metaphor for emotions. So when I was in the military, um, I was in security forces, which was air-based defense. And in protecting certain areas, if it was dark, part of your equipment was flares. And you were authorized to shoot a flare to illuminate a space you couldn't see, a dark area. Uh, But there were some rules prior to emitting that flare that needed to take place, you would have to obviously get authorization from command. And the other is you would have to alarm your teammates so they wouldn't get blinded by the flare by seeing the light as it hit the sky. 
But what's so cool about a flare is, once it sparks, it lights up the dark area. And when the dark area is lit, if you're not blinded, you can look out and see that area with clarity. And for us in airbase defense, we'd make our decision then if we needed to respond. If a threat was present when the flare illuminated the area, we would revert to our training and respond. If there was nothing in the area that was illuminated, we'd simply let the flare burn out and go back to business as usual. So do you use your emotions to illuminate your present moment, giving you clarity so that you can make the right decision when you respond? Or do you use your emotions in a way that clouds your judgment, making it hard for you to respond? I'm not suggesting either is right or wrong. I'm just saying it's sure as hell good to know where you are. <laughs>